Hello my friends and welcome to Youth Potential, a channel dedicated to helping young people with mental health problems. I have two books available, 102 Distraction Techniques and Self-Harm to Self-Harmony. Both of these books are only available on Amazon. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hello my friend Scott here representing Youth Potential. This is a very special video because I'm finally getting to do my first collaboration video and it's going to be in the form of an interview and I'm going to be doing it with a person called Malika. She also goes by the name of Self Harmer Problems on her Instagram and YouTube channel. So the reason I'm doing this is because, well, I've always wanted to do a collaboration with someone who does kind of similar work to myself and Malika does really, really good work um, uh, on social media. I've been following her for about two years now I think when I when I relapsed I think that's when I started uh, following her and I've just really I've appreciated all the work that she's done she's kind of in a league of her own and she deserves a lot more attention um, and there was there was a time sort of earlier this year she got hacked on Instagram she had like over 22 23 000 followers I think it was and yeah she had to start again from scratch and it was it was really sad it was really sad and I just kind of want to help her rebuild her following because, yeah, she deserves it. She does some really good work and she uh, started a YouTube channel as well. I think it was earlier this year, um, which I think is, is really good. She talks about some really good topics. Um, anyway, just to let you know, all of these questions and her responses are going to be recorded at completely different times. So if you're wondering why I'm wearing different clothes or in a different location, and she's probably going to do the same. It's because, yeah, I basically recorded each question, sent them across separately, she's responded, and then vice versa. Okay, so we're not doing a Skype call or uh, a WhatsApp video or anything like that. I really wanted the quality of this video to be good because I know doing Skype calls and things like that, the quality can be a bit naff. So I felt like doing it this way was the best way. Okay, so anyway, on with the first question. Okay, Malika, tell us about self harmer problems. What what is self harmer problems all about? What do you, what do you do? Hi everyone, hi Scott. Thank you so much for your kind words. So I think you described self harmer problems pretty well. It started something like three and a half years ago when I posted a series of self harmer problems that I came up with, and then I kept going memes, coping skills, all sorts of stuff. And then around a year and a half now, I started on YouTube. So the whole goal of self harmer problems is awareness and education about self harm both to self-harmers, to know what's normal, what's not normal, why some feelings are very common, and also educate the general public and loved ones of self-harmers on what's useful, what's not useful, what misconceptions are kind of true, what's, which ones are not, which is most of them. And I also share a part of my story because I am a former self-harmer about what happened to me, what helped me, what didn't help me, my journey with medication too. So basically I talk about everything self-harm related. And another goal is really to create the content that I wish I had seen when I was still self-harming about why I was feeling this type of way, why I had those thoughts that didn't make sense to me, why I wasn't the only one feeling those things and how self-harm worked, what was true about self-harm, what was not true and all of that. So every time I'm posting something, I'm really trying to think about what would have helped me. And on YouTube, I also talk a bit about social work because I'm a social work student and a bit also about body modification because I quite like it. Thank you for sharing that with us, Malika. That's um, it's a really good insight as to what you do. I think it's absolutely amazing uh, that you're doing this. Your, your your project across Instagram and YouTube is is amazing. You do some really good stuff, and yeah, I think loads of people would agree with me when I say it's you know a really brave thing to do. It's a really uh, important cause that you've got there. It's it's awesome. Uh, but one thing that I really like to know about people and what they do is is their motives. So my next question to you is, why do you do what you do? Well. That's a very good question. Like I said in my first response, I think one of my main driver in what I do is doing what I wish I had seen or had witnessed when I was still in that state of self-harming and feeling so alone and feeling like no one was understanding me, that professionals weren't understanding me, where basic education on self-harm, what's the definition, what are the statistics, and all of that was not available or at least not easily available. So I would say that is one of my main driver is just doing what I wish I had seen, I had done, I had received when I was still in that state of self-harming, of my parents find, finding out, of 
me being sent to hospital and all of that. My second driver, I would say, is my frustration with how things are at the moment regarding self-harm and self-harm awareness. I have done maybe too many videos and posts about that, I don't know. I have done a few videos on my frustration of how self-harm is treated right now and how little professionals know about it and how little treatment, specified treatment there is for it and how much stigma they stir around it and misinformation, I should say. And that's even worse in the French scene where I come from because I'm from Switzerland and I speak French. Here it is even harder to find good information on self-harm. So that's why I try to translate some of my videos also in French. I should do that more maybe. So yeah, I would say this is my second biggest driver. It's just my huge frustration with how little mental health awareness there there is, but also just how little self-harm awareness and education and all that there is. And me just trying to do my small part that I can do in trying to change, change the situation. Firstly by educating myself because I've just learned so much through doing YouTube and doing research for videos but also then trying to educate others with my videos when I put them out. And then the last reason I could think of is just how I am. I've always been a very passionate person, I've always been a very um, stubborn person I could say that wanted to help others. I've wanted to do social work for a very very long time even when I didn't know this was the word for what I wanted to do. So yeah, I think this is also a bit of my, my personality and how I work. I also love social media. I spent way too much time on YouTube and now also on Instagram. So this is why I chose those medias and this is why I do things the way I do. Lovely. That's that's really good, Malika. Um, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You know, it's a, a really noble thing that you do. It's There's not enough people like you out there. Um, it's, yeah, it's just your motives. Uh, it's... it's it's completely understandable. I can uh, I can relate to that as well, and um, yeah, just it's nice to see that level of passion, you know, in this in the pursuit of your your project. It's just it's, it's brilliant. Um, so, question number three is uh, more of a, a personal thing rather than uh, your actual self harmer problems project, um, and that's uh, when did you start self harming, and why did you start self harming? So I started self-harming when I was 14. I made a whole video about that on my YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail. But I started when I was 14. I was in last year of obligatory school here in Switzerland. And as to the why, it's something that I've always kind of struggled to explain because there was no big outside circumstances that could explain it. I didn't get raped. My family didn't die. I didn't become homeless, I there was nothing that I could pinpoint why I was feeling so sad and feeling so bad. But looking back at it, I think it was a mix of uh, three things I could say. First thing was a form of bullying, it wasn't, again, it wasn't what I called hardcore bullying, I wasn't thrown down the stairs, I wasn't cursed at, but I was put aside, I wasn't integrated in the group and to this day, this is something that uh, really hurts me when it happens. The second, I think, is just being a teenager. Being a teenager is a pretty rough time. You have to experience new things. You have to rediscover who you want to be. It's a very bizarre and trying time. And last thing is depression. I believe that I was starting to show signs of depression that I didn't see this way. But that made me suffer a lot. That made me very desperate. That quickly made me quite suicidal too, and self-harm felt like the perfect answer to all of those things that I couldn't cope with, that I didn't know what to do about, that I felt like I had no power on. Wow, thank you for sharing that, Malika. Um, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to talk about, so I do appreciate you uh, sharing that with us. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of people out there that can relate to such similar um, you know, reasons. So question number four is during your, you know, your darkest times when you were self-harming, what or who helped you the most, um, sort of short or long term, basically? Well, this question actually made me realise that I had a lot more support than most people do. 
I had my family who was there, who was very, very supportive of me, who was really trying to help me and being so, so sweet and so kind. I had also a few friends that were really present and were trying to help me daily. I had my therapist at the time that I saw for a few years that was very, very helpful and that was very kind and that I, very, I really clicked with. And then finally, a year after my hospital stay, I met my boyfriend who has been extremely sweet, who has been extremely supportive and has really, really made a huge difference as well. A lot of them were really knowledgeable about self-harm, most of them really didn't know much about it. They had a few misconceptions, a few ideas that weren't really right, but they were supportive and they were trying to understand and they were willing to learn and learn from my experience. So that is what was really helpful. And knowing that they were present, that they were supportive, that if I had an issue I could call them, they would be there for me, was really what made a difference. There were some lovely answers there, Malika. Thank you very much. So my next question, question five, um, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give yourself um, when you was in that time of struggle with self-harm, like those, those really early days, what kind of advice would you give yourself now? So it's always a bit hard to say after the fact what would have actually helped me or not, but what I could um, imagine right now would be to tell my younger self, especially before I was uh, hospitalized in the very beginning stages, like you said, would have been to reach out and to just express myself more and express what I was going through more of my overthinking, all of my um, depression symptoms, all of that, and just express them to others. And this is something I really struggled with, and so this is why I wasn't doing it as much, because I... I really didn't know how to express my emotions or deal with them and so this is why I started self-harming but I would tell myself to make more of an effort to reach out to people and to tell them about it and especially to my parents because I wanted to be all grown up. I was 14, I was almost an adult and so I, I wanted to be very independent, I've always been this way and so I didn't really talk with them about that and I didn't want them to know of course but so yeah I would say trust your parents <laughs> basically and tell them what's going on and just even if you don't tell them that you are self-harming just tell them that you're having a hard time and just have this trust with them that that they can understand and they can try to help you because my parents were brilliant and they definitely could have helped me work through all of that. I would also add something about uh, baby cot syndrome, I guess, which is a concept term I invented. I have a video about that if you guys are interested. And yeah, I will definitely uh, put something in it about that because I think that could have really helped me uh, just know that just because I didn't feel my, like my self-harm was enough right now didn't mean that when my self-harm would get worse, I would feel any difference. I would still feel like I wasn't self-harming enough, like I wasn't good enough of a self-harmer, as crazy as it sounds. And yeah, I, I would throw in something about that as well, that um, it's, it's, not, it's never going to be enough, basically. Wow, Malika, some really interesting points there. Um, I think it's safe to say there's quite a few of us, if not all of us, would say those kinds of things to our younger selves. Um, yeah, some really, really good points there. Um, so my next question is, what are your future aims for your for yourself for self harmer problems as a as a as a channel as an Instagram page? You know what what kind of goals? What would you like to achieve? You know, sort of long term with self harmer problems in yourself. Well, as for self harmer problems, I have lots and lots of hopes and dreams that I don't know if they can ever be done. I don't know if they're really realistic, but. I have them. So first off, something that I've been thinking about for a while now is creating a website just to make myself more available, to make what I've created, the few things that I've created more available. This is something that I could do. But mostly I would love for it to become more of an in real life stuff, to create something more than just social media content. One thing that I've been thinking about for a long time now 
is creating recovery meetings for self-harmers, just places where people in recovery from self-harm can come and discuss and meet new people and just have a place where you don't feel judged and you can just talk openly about your story and what you've been through. Another thing that I would love to create is an advocacy group, I guess you could call it. In French you would say an association, just something that uh, would fight for the, I guess you could say, the rights of people struggling with self-harm. I don't know if it's the right way to put it, but basically a group that could do uh, awareness, education, uh, that could be a resource for people struggling with self-harm, but also for uh, something like mental health professionals, medical professionals, social work professionals, and just a place where people can find resources and something that uh, can help people around self-harm, basically. Another thing that I would really, really like to happen, but I don't think that it will, is that I would love to regain my Instagram following. If you guys don't know, I had a previous account, also called self Harm Problems, that had 24,000 followers that got hacked almost a year ago now. And so I'm now starting from scratch, which is a very, very hard process, a very draining process. And I would love to gain all this following back, but I don't think this is a realistic goal, to be honest. So yeah, more in real life stuff, more just seeing my following grow and seeing the project grow as a whole. Honestly, if I could just make a living out of self-harm problems, I would be so happy. That would be amazing. I don't know if that will happen one day, but I really hope it does. And as personal goal for myself, I hope to be graduating soon from my social work degree. And I would also really love to become a mental health first aid certified this year. This is a new thing in Switzerland that I would love to do. And again, if in 5, 10, 20 years time, I could make a living only out of self-harm problems and self-harm advocacy and self-harm uh, education and all of that, I would be so happy. That would be my life goal, my life dream. Well, I'm really pleased for you, Malika, with the uh, goals and ambitions that you've got for yourself and self-harm of problems. You know, that's, it's good that you know what you want to do because there are so many people out there that don't have a clue what they want to do with their lives. And the fact that you're, you know, you've got this campaign, you've got this social media project, you've got your own personal goals, it's, they're amazing. And they're really, really noble things to be uh, striving for as well. And what you said about your previous following on your Instagram account, I have absolutely no doubt that you're going to surpass the the numbers that you had before. Just It might take a while, but you'll get there because your content is amazing. So my seventh and final question for you, Malika, is, and this is going to be difficult, in one sentence, what advice would you give to someone who is struggling with self-harm? Whoa, okay, that's a hard one in just one sentence. I guess all I could say in one sentence is just get help because this is what you're gonna need. It doesn't necessarily have to be professional help or professional help from the beginning. It could just be reaching out to a friend, to a family member, to just someone close to you to get help. Or even online, buying a self-help book or something like that. Just get help. Thank you, Scott, so much for this interview. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for all your encouragement and all of that. You've always been such a good support to me. And know that all the kind things you told me, you can tell them right back to yourself because you're doing amazing work too and I really appreciate what you're doing. Bye, guys. Oh, thank you, Malika. Those those final parting words were really sweet, really nice, means a lot to me. Anyway, I really enjoyed doing this video. Um, believe it or not, I think the first recording was at the end of October last year. Uh, it's taken some time to get it all done due to personal circumstances and being busy and whatnot. But uh, it's been really good. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Malika's amazing. She's much better than anything I do. So, please, I'll put her, her Instagram and her YouTube below. And, yeah, that's it. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. All the best. Take care. Bye.